At this point, we have all heard the story of the unfortunate police brutality that happened to the victim, George Floyd. We know about the officer that put his knee on the back of the neck of that individual, and we all know the three other officers that were complicit in the event that went down. And I think it was almost universally agreed upon that most people across all political spectrums found this specific event to be abhorrent but i have seen as of recent people starting to make defenses towards the officers and i think a part of that is seeing a reaction to is a reaction seeing a lot of the riots and looting that has been going on although i would expect that a small fraction of people actually agree with the cop there is always going to be a certain section of people that are bootlickers but we all know what happened with George Floyd. There is no excuse. It doesn't matter the past that that uh, person who allegedly used a fake $20 bill. It doesn't matter if he was a delinquent in his childhood or if he had been to jail multiple times. He was wrongfully, wrongfully killed in a horrific way. Asphyxiation is... I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. There are worse ways to die, but being killed by somebody else is absolutely horrible. Being murdered by somebody is absolutely horrible. But this video isn't about that. It is about the non-stop, consistent excuses made for rioters and looters. I, I've seen so many Facebook friends of mine, so many political pundits justifying looting because somebody died. Wouldn't you be pissed off too if your color was being targeted by the police? That's how they frame it. And they'll say something like, somebody got killed by the police, somebody was murdered, and your concern is about the Walmart? <laughs> oh Christ. If your concern is about the Walmart, oh, I should have screenshotted these examples, but this isn't the point. This is just me getting my thoughts out. If you care about the Walmart, you are part of the problem. How backwards, how abhorrent of a thought, how inconsistent does your brain have to be to where you can live with that, to where you could sum, you, if you have the capacity to reason and use... Uh, some sort of frame of thought that isn't contradictory if you have that capacity and that is the conclusion that you come to that is so abhorrent that it I take a step back and You're make well, okay, so here's the problem. I Will explain why it's abhorrent instead of just saying it's an abhorrent and backwards way of thinking and this doesn't by any means excuse somebody getting a knee placed on the back of their neck until they suffocate to death, regardless if they had any health issues. The person wasn't resisting, you don't need to put your knee on the back of their neck, but, well not but, let's, let's shift over here and talk about this other thing that is stupid. First of all, even if you could somehow make a justification that looting Walmart is somehow different than looting your mom and pop business, and sure, to an extent, there is a difference. Yes, the mom and pop store is going to suffer more than a Walmart that is looted, but that's not the point. The fact that you can justify that at all is what is absolutely wrong, especially since Walmart didn't have anything to do with the death of George Floyd or any other individual that has suffered at the hands of the state. That is just a fact. Walmart didn't place their knee on the back of somebody's neck. The CEO of Walmart didn't place their knee on the back of somebody's neck. And there is no Walmart employee who works for the government who has placed their knee on the back of somebody's neck. Walmart is selling you cheaply produced products some of which come comes from China, 
And you buy it and you save money and you have money to spend on other things. That's how economics works. And it doesn't matter if it's Walmart or if it's a mom and pop business or somewhere in between. The principle is still the same, first of all. It's the same across the board. Looting is wrong, even if nobody got murdered. Obviously, we agree. Looting is 100% wrong. Rioting and private property destruction is 1,000% wrong. And somebody dying, yes, that's wrong too, but it's not even connected to the rioting or the looting. Which, to me, in my mind, I just can't make any sort of excuse that would come close to justifying the looting that has been excused and it's amazing to me that anybody out there could make that justification not only that but there's another excuse that is being thrown around that is being thrown around by uh, people who are making excuses for rioters and looters so obviously as a response to the rioting and looting a lot of people have been suggesting that they will defend their property with lethal force if necessary whether the property be their business or there's a lot of fringe groups maybe they're not fringe maybe it is the um, the motivation of a lot of these rioters and looters to bring it to the suburbs or other residential areas a lot of people have been saying, hey, if you do that, we have guns and we will defend ourselves. And there's a lot of people advocating shooting looters on sight if they show up. And you have people out there who are making excuse or who are asking this question thinking they're being deep. Is private property really worth more than somebody's life? To me, in my mind, I see that and... So, let's let's say you hold life as the primacy. You hold it as the absolute most fundamental right that you have. I would agree with you. But to me, your life isn't just a right that you have. Your rights extend much farther beyond that. I would say the product of what you produce from your life is also extremely important. Getting any of your rights violated, such as having your property damaged without your permission, is absolutely terrible and a violation of your rights. And I think you have the right to use whatever force necessary to defend your property. But let's just look at it from, let's break it down to its most radical elements. You have a right to your life. You have a right to the property that you earned. What is your property? What is that? Well, your property is an extension of you. Your property is an extension of your rights. It has taken a certain amount of time of your life to acquire that property. It has taken wealth, which took a certain amount of time of your life to acquire that property. The property that you acquire is a product of your labor or your intellect which aren't entirely different things. Your intellect being intellectual property, your labor will being part of, you know, being something that's only possible because of your body, which is essentially your property. Your body is your property. Therefore, private property, in some cases, is worth more than your life if you are using your life to put somebody else's property at risk. I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm not sorry. I actually, I feel no sympathy for an idiot that goes and tries to damage or loot property and somebody defends their property with lethal force. If you have no respect for somebody's property, you have no respect for somebody's life. You have to have a very specific ideology to even declare private property as something so insignificant to where you could even put that false dichotomy on somebody to try to guilt trip them about defending their property from a bunch of thugs. Or you have to have some sort of contradiction that makes you open to that idea. That you can 
put a false dichotomy on somebody who shouldn't have had to choose in the first place. Nobody should have to come to the decision of, do I value this person who I have no idea who they are? Do I value their life over what I've earned? And let's be clear, we're not talking about somebody you know, walks through your backyard and takes a shortcut. We're not talking about shooting them. We're not talking about shooting somebody that knocked on your door because they got the wrong address. We're not talking about shooting somebody because they, I don't know, steal a yard sign or something, and that's it. We're not talking about somebody who just places a toe antagonistically on your property. We're not talking about that. We're talking about somebody coming to you with the threat of taking your property or damaging it. We're talking about that. And to me, just understanding that private property or all property is an extension of oneself, which is also your property. Understanding that leads me to conclude that you have the right to defend it. And if it is at a cost of somebody who is not considering your rights, then that is a reasonable use of force and a justification. There is this analogy that has been used, which I think really sums up exactly my thoughts about this. It's like if your best friend or your sister or your cousin was brutally murdered and they yeah they're brutally murdered by some thug or they died in a, I don't know bank robbery or something or they, they got murdered by somebody you're pissed off about it so you go to your neighbor's house and you either kick them in the face you steal their stuff or you burn their house down because well you know your family member got murdered or your friend got murdered you have a right to be pissed off that they got murdered you have a right to want justice to be served but you do not have a right to hurt somebody whether it's through property damage or theft or physical harm and it's not just rioting and looting it is people defending their property without firearms and then getting beat by rioters. The, it, this would be different if the protesters burned down the police station that these officers were employed by. That is one thing. Burning down an auto zone, burning down a Walmart, burning down any mom and pop business, and looting flat screen TVs and stereos and damaging cars. That's too far. That's unjustifiable, and there's nothing you can do to justify it unless you are living with conceptual contradictions and you have not thoroughly thought out any of the morals that you believe in, and you have no sort of consistent, I would say, metaphysics. You don't see reality the same way that other people do, and because of the way you do see reality, you're able to make so many contradictory statements that... Nobody else would ever imagine trying to justify. Those are my thoughts. Have a good one.